Avoid the crowds at Walt Disney World? Find out how to choose the absolute perfect time on episode 37 of the Theme Park Hipster Show. Hey, Theme Park Hipsters! It's your host, Nikki J, the owner of ThemeParkHipster.com, where I help you plan the best solo theme park vacation with the latest tips, reviews, personal stories, and more. Today, I have another fun and quite informative episode just for you. But first, I want you to know that I do have a free Disney itinerary ebook for you to download instantly, and it will be in the show notes. Now, planning a visit to the happiest place on earth is always an exciting experience, and finding the best deals, tips, and tricks to make each theme park adventure is everything Theme Park Hipster is about. While you're searching for discounted theme park tickets and taking advantage of free Walt Disney World dining, have you ever considered what are the best times to even go to Disney? Holiday peaks, Disney crowd sizes, weather, and a few other factors have a lot to do with your Disney experience, including how long you'll be waiting in line for your favorite rides. Here are a few tips to get you started on picking the ideal time to travel to Disney alone or with friends. These are some six tips, so let's jump right in. You guys know how I do it. Tip number one is to avoid all holidays. If you're a solo traveler, this one's especially for you. Avoiding the holiday Disney crowd, especially in November and December, means shorter lines and less traffic. For parents... This can be a bit tricky since taking your children to Disney World sounds like the best gift ever. The only issue is every other mom and dad has the same exact idea. Mm -hmm. Of course, that doesn't mean you can't take your kids to Disney for Christmas season or any other holiday for that matter. It just means you'll need to be prepared for a lot of company. And I mean a lot of company. No, wait, you don't hear me. A lot of company. And if you've ever seen the crowd levels for Disney at Christmas on Christmas Day, then you realize why I had to stop and take this one moment of silence for all those brave people who try that every year. Let's get back on the track. (laughs) Tip number two is to avoid peak seasons. The winter season, Christmas and Thanksgiving breaks especially, as well as spring break and the general summer season are all pretty popular times for the parks. If you don't mind long lines and you feel welcomed in large crowds, this may not be a deal breaker for you. Otherwise, I recommend checking out the chart over at Theme Park Hipster to compare the months of the year by seasonal weather and crowd size. Tip number three is to know what are the best times to go to Disney. You'll notice that April has crowd sizes ranging from low to moderate, while March has crowd sizes ranging from moderate to high, mostly due to the influx of spring breakers. While you're planning that perfect day to go, don't forget to download the official Disney crowd calendar, which I will leave a link to that one also in the show notes. So what are the actual best times to visit Disney? The months of January, February, April, and November. These months are closely followed by March, May, September. These months are closely followed by March, May, September, and October as still pretty decent visiting times. But the worst times to visit Disney are June, July, and August. December and March aren't too bad, especially since December is typically a very festive time for the theme parks. When you're thinking about how to do Disney parks and when to come, you're going to always have to consider Florida's weather. Florida is mostly filled with perfect weather. However, there are moments when I question my sanity of living here. Summertime in Florida is like no other state, especially for theme park goers. If you're a resident of an area that experiences, you get all your four seasons with mild summers, then you will definitely be thrown off by the hot, humid, 
indescribable weather that Florida is known for. You'll want to be prepared for surviving the Disney heat, but don't worry, I have some summertime and some Florida heat survival guides over at Theme Park Hipster. I'll be sure to leave that in the show notes as well. Now we're going to go through each month. I'm telling you guys, I'm going to prepare you. You're going you're gonna to know when you're going to go. January. January has gorgeous weather with temperatures around 70 degrees Fahrenheit and lower crowd levels, which makes this month a top month to visit the parks. January is one of the last remaining months considered to be the off season with Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach usually closed for refurbishment. Overall, late January is one of my favorite times to visit the Disney parks. These are some January events to keep in mind while you're preparing. You have the Epcot International Festival of the Arts. You have New Year's Day fireworks at the Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Disney Hollywood Studios, and sometimes Disney Springs. It's also about Disney World Marathon weekend in January. Holidays to avoid in January. There's only one, and that is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Up next is February. February is still a slow month with mild weather and it's usually better than January in regards to crowd level. The Disney World of Parks may still be closed during this time. Some of the events that you want to keep in mind for February is the Disney's Princess Half Marathon Weekend. In February, these are some holidays that you're going to want to avoid. They are President's Day and Valentine's Day. And yeah, they, you're like, President's Day and Valentine's Day? Who's there? Everyone. Trust me. Everyone. I've been there on both. It's crazy. Don't go. Up next is March. In March, temperatures are starting to warm up, but they're still manageable. Park attendance begins to pick up this month, but it's not as bad as the summer months. Here are some March events to keep in mind. You have the Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival. The Atlanta Braves usually do their spring training at Disney's Wide World of Sports Complex. And some of the days that you want to keep in mind when you're planning your trip in March is that there's Daytona Bike Week. Sometimes Easter falls into March and the local schools in some of the local counties go on spring break. So this can swell park attendance. Up next is April. In April, temperatures continue to rise, peaking around mid 80s during the month. The crowd level is still mild to moderate due to the last of the spring breakers. Some of the events that take place in April are the Star Wars Rival Run Half Marathon Weekend. You have Earth Day at Animal Kingdom and you still have the Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival going on. Some holidays that you're going to want to avoid or just days in general that you're going to want to avoid in April are any kind of spring break days and Easter if it falls in April. Up next is May. In May, the season of thunderstorms and downpours start, not to mention the introduction of the torturous Florida humidity and heat peaking in the 90 degree Fahrenheit range. Crowds are usually moderate during this time since it's the month prior to theme park tourist season. Some May events that I want to mention is the Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival and a holiday to keep in mind during May is Memorial Day. Now we are heading to June. This is the month to have your patience ready as the tourist season kicks up into full gear along with that never-ending Florida sun rays and constant rainy days. It's during this time that water, sunscreen, sunglasses, and an umbrella are all needed in your theme park bag. Some of the events, well, they're not really too many, but sometimes Epcot has the Sounds Like Summer concert series. There are also days that you want to avoid like mid-June to the end of June, which is when most of the time kids are released for summer. Now we are in July and this is one of the busiest times at Walt Disney World. Not only are most kids out of school, you have to deal with one of the major holidays in America, which is Independence Day. The parks are open much longer during July, but you still have to fight the crowds and the unforgiving Florida sun. Here is a hipster power tip to help you survive. Take a break midday after 12 p.m. to avoid the most dangerous UV rays from the sun and return towards the evening after 5 p.m. Some of the events that happen in July, as mentioned, you have the 4th of July fireworks and celebrations at the Magic Kingdom, Epcot, and Hollywood Studios. 
and the days to avoid, which is basically the Independence Day in July. All right, guys, we are in August. Believe it or not, by August, temperatures are still rising in Florida, which makes you feel miserable being outside. The crowd level is still heavy with a dip coming towards the end of the month as kids head back to school. Some of the events that take place in August are Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, Epcot International Food and Wine Festival. Some of the days that you want to avoid in August are the first two weeks of the month and the opening weekend of Epcot International Food and Wine Festival. On to September. In the early part of September, lines begin to die down only a little bit. The weather in September is still the same as August, so I don't care what anybody tell you, it's still crazy in September. So come prepare if you're coming to Florida during September. Plus, it can also be a peak month for hurricane season. Some of the events that happen during September are also the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival and Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. The holiday to avoid in September is Labor Day. Now we are on to October, starting to get, you know, starting to, we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, kind of. During the month of October, the Florida weather starts to cooperate, well, slightly. Days may start off cool in the mid-60s and end up pretty warm in the upper 80s. This is one of the best times to book a trip to Walt Disney World. You'll be able to see all of the fall decor lining the famous streets of Main Street USA and the Magic Kingdom theme park. The crowd levels tend to pick up mid to late October as everyone gets in their quick Epcot Food and Wine Festival visits and their Mickey Not So Scary Halloween party. And as I mentioned, those are the two events that happen in October. Some of the holidays to avoid in October is, of course, Halloween. It's going to be very busy, and most likely, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party will be sold out. Up next, November. November is my favorite time to visit the Disney parks. Not only do you get to see both fall decor and Christmas decor all in one month, the weather is absolutely gorgeous in Florida. Perfect mild days complete with cool evenings are the ideal formula for an amazing theme park day. And not to mention November is my birthday month, so I just love it because I go to theme parks like almost every day for my birthday. (laughs) Here are some November events to take into consideration. You have Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, Epcot International Food and Wine Festival, and Disney Wine and Dine Half Marathon Weekend. Days to avoid at Disney in November is the week of Thanksgiving. Just don't do it. Don't do it to yourself. I know it's tempting, but just don't go. We are finally at December. December and the magical Walt Disney World Resort is the ideal time to visit the parks. Only problem is that everyone wants the same enchanting experience for the holidays. The parks are decked out in holiday cheer and the Florida weather is oh so dear. If you must attend in December, then I recommend coming during the first two weeks of the month as these days are still fairly quiet at the parks. Some of the events that take place in December are Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, Epcot International Festival of the Holidays, Holidays at Disney Springs, Sunset Seasons Greetings at Hollywood Studios, and Resort Hotel Holiday Decorations. Some of the days to avoid in December are the last two weeks of December, Christmas Eve and Christmas, New Year's Eve, and of course that goes into New Year's Day. Here's a main, main, main tip for you guys. If you're planning a December trip, you'll probably just have to weigh whether it's important to you to avoid really big crowds or for you to join in in all the Disney holiday fun. Even with this guide, sometimes running into a sea of visitors is just unavoidable. There are constant field trips and sometimes just a random influx from visitors, especially visitors internationally. It is for times like this and when you have these influxes that I wanted to share just a few of my tips that I have found of trying to choose the best days to avoid the crowd. The first tip is just to book your fast pass early. The Fast Pass is a feature on the My Disney Experience app that lets you book your time slots on select rides. You can do them either 30 or 60 days in advance. Any Disney ticket or annual pass holder can book up to 30 days in advance. If you are a guest that's staying at an on-site resort, then you can reserve your Fast Pass within 60 days and you'll want to do this. Another tip I want to remind you of is to use the mobile ordering for food. 
on these crowded days, everything is about planning. You want to have your fast passes booked. You want to have mobile ordering service on deck because it just kind of helps you kind of ease your way through all the crowd and kind of just get to everything that you want to see quickly. Another tip I want you to do is to make sure that you make reservations to any of the special events and restaurants early. Reserving your seat at special events in highly coveted restaurants is always a good idea. And at Walt Disney World, it's no exception. Because the parks are so large, special events book up quickly, and the better restaurants fill up just as fast. In the article, the 35 best Walt Disney World tips that I covered over on Theme Park Hipster, I went over some ways that you can book those fast passes and those reservations to special events and restaurants really easily. And one of the things that I wrote about is that if you're on the app, around 7 a.m. I always try because usually the reservation system is kind of readjusting and usually things that you weren't able to reserve before they usually pop up during that little small window. With the app I was able to get into the food and wine festival and beverage seminar that was booked for the whole month. It was a miracle and that's why I'm just here. I just really want to share with you everything I learned all these little hacks and tricks. I want you to be able to know them too that way when you go to Disney you have a spectacular time no matter how crowded it is. These are just some of the ways to get around the thick crowds and the infamous Disney theme park lines. If you have any tips, I want to hear about them. Come tell me over at the Theme Park Hipster Facebook group. We want to hear. We're a community of solo theme park travelers and people who just love everything Disney too. And we love helping each other out. Also, be sure to rate and review this episode. That way I can continue to bring you the best Disney hacks tailored just for you. Don't forget to get your free Disney game plan ebook. You can find that link in the show description. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to the Theme Park Hipster Show. You are my friend and you are my family, whether you know that or not. And until next time, happy park hopping hipsters. The content on the Theme Park Hipster Show represents my own and not those of any organizations or activity mentioned. I am just someone here who likes to share my own stories to you and hope that I can help you have the best vacation ever.